I'm Rob Lucuri, a senior editor at Gold Derby with four-time Oscar nominee and Emmy winner Danny Elfman, composer for Noah Baumbach's latest, the highly anticipated White Noise. Uh, Danny, a word that's often thrown around when discussing your work is eclectic, uh, your body of work to date, and of course, the scores themselves. White Noise takes that to another level because it's not tethered to a specific genre. Um, and, and there's this beautiful mix of all kinds of uh, elements that you bring to the score that I just found so interesting and exciting. So looking back to when you joined Noah on the project, what was the central underlying brief for the musical? Was, was there no central underlying brief? So when Noah first approached me, um, of course, I was really interested. Um, I hadn't read uh, Don DeLillo's, DeLillo's book. So um, first he sent me the script and I read the script and then immediately I read the book. And I called him back and I just said how interested I was because I can see from the writing immediately that there was no genre and nothing excites me more than the lack of a genre. Um, you know, I was very lucky to start early in my career with films that had no temp scores and no genres and nothing to guide where it should go. And I didn't realize till much later how what a luxury that was. So when I come across a film that just seems to have no sense of musically, what is this? I get very excited. Um, normally, I would wait for there to be some kind of director's cut or something like that to start working on the film. But Noah was very keen that I just start writing from having read the script in the book. And uh, so he just sent me out with these challenges. <laughs> um, and I, I know this sounds ridiculous. So I'm, I'm a little bit, as a composer, like a dog. Uh, you know, and if the director throws a stick in a certain direction, I'm like really eager to run and, and chase it down. And so he would say things like, I see the tone here as somewhere between edgy 80s influenced synthesizer driven thriller music and Norman Rockwell or, um, you know, like things like that. And it was like, oh, wow. Um, so he would say like Aaron Copeland meets 70s, 80s uh, since and Americana, but and, and these things that didn't fit together at all. So that was very exciting for me. And I, I went off and I just I wrote like seven, eight pieces before I saw anything, which is unusual for me, as I said. And uh, and he was just calling and reacting. So we, we had this whole interplay uh, before I finally went there and saw the film for the first time. But the fun part for me was how odd the tone was of the book. It, it's it, as I started working on the film, people would ask me, well, how would you describe this movie? And I go, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's uh, cynical. It's, but it's not, it's satirical, social satire, social satire, but it's not a social satire. Yeah. Uh, it's romantic, but it's not a romance. It's got uh you know, thriller elements, but it's definitely not a thriller. So I, I just have no idea how to describe it uh, other than, you know, Noah would just like really love uh, putting these elements together that would seemingly have no place. And and that to me was very exciting. So that's how we started. I um I find that so fascinating. I would probably, given just my mindset, I would have been terrified by that whole proposition of just uh, just go and try like Giorgio Moroda meets I don't know the Night Stalker or something like I don't know it's just hard to... I mean that that really <laughs> was one of the first conversations we had you know what would happen if Aaron Copeland meant to Tangerine Dream or Giorgio, Giorgio Moroda like what would that sound be and I was like oh boy <laughs> right, yeah funny. I mean I just looking at your past work, I, I could probably imagine that you'd really dive in deep on something like that. And that just sounds so interesting and exciting. Um, you it mean, it's a fun uh, world to get lost in. Uh, of course. I mean, that's a really great attitude because you could have con kind of gone the other way and just thought, oh, I can't do this. It's too hard. But I mean, I'm, thankfully, that's not the way you decided to go. <laughs> um, you uh, mentioned Dom DeLillo's novel. Um, it's obviously a really famous novel. Um, it's quite chaotic in tone, as you say. And it tackles quintessentially American themes and ideas that are very relevant to us today. I imagine a lot of the commentary about this film when it comes out will be how beautifully Noah was able to get his arms around the tone of this 
in some way, shape or form. But when a film is switching tones so dramatically, uh, part of the pun again, um, do you... I mean, obviously you're saying that you enjoyed the process, but is it ever, are there ever days where you just really stumped with how you're going to tackle a particular scene given what you did the day before? Uh, no, I mean, I'll get uh, stumped sometimes with working out a theme, how it resolves and, and things like that. Melodically, what is my melody? Where does it go? Um, that's the kind of stuff I'll, I'll obsess with, but I, I never think about what direction am I going? What direction should I go, be going? Um, you know, I, I don't actually think about what I'm doing a lot, which I know sounds strange, but um, I, uh, I'm i a very, uh, I, I don't know how to approach music intellectually, um, mentally, you know, it's all like just jump in and just start doing stuff. And, uh, and then suddenly I make this, kind of strange interesting sound and I'll go oh I like that bit so it all starts you know it's always no matter what the what type of movie it starts with a bunch of improvisation and but in a in a in a movie like this where it's such a strange wide field the improvisation definitely is going out of the bounds of what I would do let's say for a more traditional film or an action film or a romantic film um that's got a, a a more defined sense of this is what it is and then you kind of get a feeling for your parameters and okay i'll work within these parameters and then occasionally you you get a film where the parameters are just really far out and you realize oh I, there really kind of are no parameters here so just jump in like like you know the music the notes the musical notes are it's kind of like being in a sandbox or something and just making shapes and things and and inventing that sounds so rewarding um there's one question you have probably already received but i'm fascinated to know about this and i've always wanted to chat with you and that is this film covers a lot of material but death and the fear of death also underpins a lot of what takes place in the story so for anyone who loves your work it seems a no-brainer that you would be the composer to write the music for it so well, that was the first thing Noah said when he called me. Goes, really? I've got a movie for you. It's about death and fear of dying. It's made for you. So he, that was his like pitch to, to kind of bring me in. And I, I you know, he was joking, but uh, it was pretty well, funny way to start a conversation. And I mean, immediately would you, would the, did, uh, that must have piqued your interest. Yes, of course. <laughs> I mean, what is it about really that? My interest was just Noah, his yeah. work and the excitement of working with such a talented director that I've never worked with before. But that was, kind of, he said it as kind of a quasi joke, but it, that's how we got started was exactly that conversation. What does that fundamental, you know, fear that all humans share, no matter where you're from or who you are, it's so, it's so fundamental to us all. And, the, and it's, it's featured in a lot of the work that you've done. What is it about that that um, inspires you to write these really beautiful and memorable scores? <laughs> I, I really I just couldn't tell you. I mean, my whole life, um, starting in my 20s, I, you know, felt like I was already being pursued by death close behind me. So my whole life feels like it's been running from this grim reaper who's swinging at me. And Noah would ask me about that, too. And I would say, I don't know why I'm that way. It's the, but yet I, I don't stress about it. It's just the way I see life is you're just constantly trying to stay one step ahead of death. That's always trying to grab you. In this particular case, the story is literally <laughs> about that. Um, but you know, for me, it's usually more of like an abstract kind of a sense that's in the back of my mind. But um, it, uh, it it is true. It's like that. That is a kind of a common thing for me, and I and I, I couldn't tell you why. Yeah. Well, Danny, congratulations on a really interesting and beautiful score, and um, we'll bring you back for the group chat shortly. <laughs>